Welcome to the tech circuit. Commonly heard phrase about electricity or more specifically current is that it takes the path of least resistance. This is often misinterpreted to mean that current takes only the path of least resistance and ignores all other paths of resistance. If you think this is how current works, then keep watching because it doesn't really work that way and this video might change the way you think about electricity. We're gonna do a little bit of theory, some practical examples, a visual demonstration of how that path of least resistance really works. Let's take a one ohm resistor and put one volt across it. Ohm's law says that the current through the resistor is one volt divided by one ohm, or one amp. We can all agree to that, right? And the total circuit current, since there is only one branch, is also one amp. What if you wanted to add a higher resistance path to the circuit? Let's say you add R2 with a value of two ohms. Because R1 is only one ohm, it will be the path of least resistance, right? So does that mean that R2 will now be ignored? That is to say, is the current through R2 zero amps? No, it's not. In fact, Ohm's law says that one volt across a two ohm resistor, voltage divided by resistance, must be equal to one half of an amp. And that's the law, right? In fact, now the total current through the circuit, I total, is 1.5 amps instead of one amp. So the two ohm resistor created its own current path that added to the total current. What about an everyday electric cooktop? Looking at only two of the burners, you can see they are wired in parallel. If we turn the 40 ohm small burner fully on, we get six amps through the burner and six amps total through the circuit. Now let's turn the 30 ohm large burner on. It is now the path of least resistance. Does that mean that the higher value resistor, the small burner, will be ignored? If so, the burner would just turn off. Oh, well, that would be really inconvenient. But what actually happens is that the small burner continues to draw six amps and the large burner now draws eight amps. So the large burner simply increased the total circuit current to 14 amps. And that's because the 240 volts is now seeing an equivalent parallel resistance of 17 ohms and 240 volts divided by 17 ohms is 14 amps. What about a typical household wall receptacle, which is a great example of a commonly found parallel circuit. If you plug in a 240 ohm lamp, you'll get about a half of an amp through both the lamp and the receptacle. And suppose that you plug in a 12 ohm toaster, which is now the path of least resistance. Well, if current took only the path of least resistance, the lamp being a higher resistor value would just shut off. And we know that's not what happens though. Of course, the lamp stays on and the total receptacle current has simply increased to accommodate both the lamp and the toaster. Now let's do a live demonstration so you can visually see how that path of least resistance really works. 100 watt bulb wired in parallel with a 40 watt bulb. And the 100 watt bulb has an on resistance of about 170 ohms and the 40 watt bulb about 400 ohms. The 100 watt bulb being 170 ohms would be the path of least resistance in this circuit. So if we turn on this light bulb right here, we're, get, we're going to get a current draw of about 0.3 amps and a total circuit current of about 0.3 amps. Now, since this is a path of least resistance, the 100 watt bulb, if we were to turn this on, some people would think that the 40 watt bulb would just turn off because the higher resistor value would just be ignored. But that's not actually what happens. What does happen is the 40 watt bulb continues to draw its 0.3 amps and the 100 watt bulb is drawing close to 0.7 amps. And the total circuit current is close to one amp now. So what has actually happened is the 100 watt bulb, rather than hogging all the current and causing the 40 watt bulb to shut off, um, it has actually increased the requirement for this 120 volts to supply an additional 0.7 amps to make this whole circuit work. And in fact, the 120 volts is now seeing an equivalent parallel resistance of these two of about 120 ohms. And 120 volts divided by 120 ohms is one amp. So when you consider the term current takes the path of least resistance, that doesn't mean that it just does that. Current favors the path of least resistance. And the greater of the circuit current will take that low resistance path, but current will take all available paths. And no matter how many paths you have from point A to B, 
and no matter what the resistance, the current through each of those paths is simply inversely proportional to the resistance and will be a non-zero value. 